I remember talking to my uh, Singapore colleagues about my talk at Strata on connected farming and how algorithms, cloud, Internet of Things, and data are fundamentally changing how we do farming globally. They shared with me their experiences of growing up in kampongs, where they had a lot of fun during weekends playing in the farms. I remember my own childhood growing up in India and being fascinated by farming, by what farmers do on their day-to-day -day activities, plowing, harvesting, sowing the seeds, and a number of activities. It was so much fun. So, what are the things that the farmer does to get a good crop? It turns out there are four things. First, you prepare the land. You till the land, you plow it, you add nutrients, you remove weeds and debris. Next, you sow the seeds. You plant the seeds deep at an optimal depth for it to germinate. Then you add water, either through irrigation or you sow at a time where you're expecting rainfall to add water to the, to the plants. And finally, when the crops reach maturity, you harvest. So given these four main activities that the farmer does, what can he or she do to get a good harvest? What is the secret? It turns out that water is a very key ingredient throughout the crop's life cycle. You want to make sure there is enough water, especially during the, se during the sowing period, that the seeds can germinate. At the same time, you don't want too much water that the water, that the seeds and the nutrients get washed away. You just want the right amount of water. Now, 80% of land that is cultivated in the world today depends on rainwater for, uh, for their, depends on rainfall for their water needs. However, the yield, the crop yield in the rain-fed land is only about half of the yield in the irrigated land. So what does a farmer who depends on rainfall for water do in the situation to improve his or her crop yield? Well, first of all, over time, over a number of uh, decades, farmers have come up with some ingenious methods for figuring out when it's going to rain. For instance, Cattle, they tend to stay very close together. They huddle close together, and sometimes they lie down when there is an approaching thunderstorm. Birds start flying lower in the sky when the weather is turning bad, when the air pressure drops. However, these methods are becoming less precise and less relevant now because of climate change. We need data. We need data and algorithms to figure out what are the best practices for farming. Now, why does it all matter? Why should we increase the crop yield, you might ask? The world's population today is about 7.5 billion, and we are cultivating in about 1.4 billion hectares of land. By 2050, our population will be a little north of 9 billion, but our cultivatable land remains substantially the same. Further. The three main cereal crops that feed the world, wheat, rice, and maize, that together contribute about half of our food energy, plant-derived food energy, require a lot of water. The crop yields are also reducing now by 20% for every degree rise in temperature because of climate change. Together, all of this means that by 2050, we need to have doubled our food production in order to feed the world. We need to produce crops a lot more efficiently in order to feed the world in just 30 years. The formula for a good harvest is simple. You sow when there is, uh, you sow good seeds when you're expecting and make sure there is uh, enough rainfall for the seeds to germinate. You ensure there are right soil conditions and you can get a good harvest. But all of this needs data and analytics to get right, especially in regions where Rainfall is not very dependable. Now, some of the methods that you can use for data-driven methods, you can use for precision farming. For instance, you can predict what's a good time to sow. 
What's a good time to prepare the land? What type of nutrients do you add? When and where and how much to water during irrigation? And finally, when to harvest? It is here that the asset, algorithms, cloud, Internet of Things, and data has the potential to transform farming globally. Let me tell you a story, a story of how acid is changing the lives of millions of farmers in the state of Andhra Pradesh in India. Millions of Indian farmers are facing crop failures today because of climate changes and soil degradation. In 2015 alone, more than 5,000 farmers committed suicide because of their inability to repay financial debt coming from crop failures. Let's take a look at the annual rainfall in one of the districts in Andhra Pradesh. All of the regions here in, in, in light, yellow, brown, orange, everything here is in, sub, uh, is in arid regions where there is very little rainfall. In this district, there are two main cropping seasons, one that is harvested in fall and another that's harvesting in spring. However, 70 to 90% of lands here depends on rainfall for water. For a rain-fed farmer, preparing for agriculture is a fragile soil water equation where timeliness and precision decide on the returns. Even a week's delay in rains can spoil the harvest. Each year, farmers in Andhra Pradesh bring all their traditional wisdom into play to anticipate the best time for sowing their crops. But with climate change and a rainfall deficit, the stakes for getting the timing right are rising. For them, the difference between a profitable year and a failed harvest is information on the optimal time to plant their fields. So, what is the optimal time for sowing? To answer this question, we partnered with agricultural scientists at the Institute for Crop Research Institute for Semi-Arid Topics, an agricultural research organization, with AWARE, an agricultural data management company, some local non-governmental organizations, and with about 175 farmers in Andhra Pradesh on a project that has the potential to change their lives. Ag these, these scientists had data for about 45 years on crop yields, on soil conditions, on rainfall patterns, etc. They used this to figure out what is the optimal date for sowing the seed. As you can see here, in about 45 years, the date for sowing, the optimal date for sowing varies almost by three months. All the way from uh, beginning of June to the beginning of September. So how can a farmer who is planning to sow the seeds this cropping season know what's a good time to plant? So in this project, the agricultural scientists, all the data collected from the scientists over the historical period is combined with the weather forecasts coming from AWARE. It's loaded onto SQL servers running on an Azure cloud, running on the Azure cloud, from where web jobs are calling out to a machine learning service that gives a number of predictions. Predictions that are then turned into recommendations that are sent to the farmers as text messages through their mobile phones. Using this architecture, the sowing advisory app, the, fa the, the farmers are sent messages about how to prepare the soil, how to control for weeds, when do they sow, what nutrients do they add, a number of recommendations during the period. Here, they were uh, in, in summer, between 15, 15th and 20th June, they were sent recommendations for preparing the land. Between 24th and 28th June, they were sent recommendations to start planting seeds. The crop was harvested in October, dried in November, and the yields were measured last week. The results have just come out. In this chart, the yields of the farmers 
who followed the recommendations, the ones in blue here, are anywhere from 2 to 55% higher than the farmers who did not follow the recommendations, who used traditional methods. On an average, there's about a 30% increase in the yield for farmers who followed these recommendations. This is a very encouraging result. Now, about half of today's population lives in urban areas. In 2050, about two-thirds of us will be living in urban areas. It's very important, critical, that we figure out how do we feed the growing urban population. There is a quite green revolution happening today in the Microsoft cafeterias. These are lettuces that are growing in hydroponic towers under plasma lights. Microgreens, microgreens are growing in coolers behind our salad bars. These are being used in pizzas and in other dishes served at the cafeteria today. Each of these microgreen towers has a number of sensors tracking very key operating characteristics that are continuously being streamed to the Azure cloud, where algorithms are detecting anomalies in attributes like the acidity level, the nutrient content, and a number of other characteristics. The Microsoft Urban Farming team responds to these anomalies very quickly. Using algorithms, cloud, IoT, and data, the urban farming effort seems to be in a really good start, seems to have gotten off to a good start now. So by leveraging asset, we in the data science community can plant the seeds for the future. Either it's by leveraging data to increase crop yields or by leveraging IoT for urban farming. We can help plant the seeds that will change lives. Thank you.